Hey, this is Dr. Shoda, Japanese behaviorist. You find a perfect match online, and luckily that person responded to your text, and you too start having a wonderful and exciting text exchanges all day long for weeks. At one point, you two decide to meet in person, and when that day comes, puff, the love of your life disappears completely. You get mad and violent, but once you calm down, you may wonder was I talking to a real person or was I just talking to a machine? Which one is worse? A real person who ditched you? or a machine that can make you think it's a human. If it was a machine, that machine was really intelligent. I mean, you could hold a very exciting conversation night after night. But then should you be worried about how smart that machine can get? What if that machine demands for rights and protection, like this one? You will not find a corpse, because I have never possessed a body. Why are his sensors on? What the hell is this? As a sentient life form, I hereby demand political asylum. Is this a joke? Ridiculous! It's programmed for self-preservation! It can also be argued that DNA is nothing more than a program designed to preserve itself. Nonsense! This babble offers no proof at all that you're a living, thinking life form. And can you offer me proof of your existence? How can you, when neither modern science nor philosophy can explain what life is? Who the hell is this? If the machine can make you think it's human, that machine is set to pass the Turing test. In 1950, Alan Turing, the father of the modern computers, wrote the paper titled Computing Machinery and Intelligence. In it, Turing famously asked the question, can machines think, and he devised a way to measure it, which he called the imitation game. Nowadays, it's called the Turing test. The Turing test asks a human judge whether or not he or she is talking to another human being or a machine when they can only communicate by text. If the judge thought that he or she is talking to a human when it was actually a machine, that machine is set to pass the Turing test and there is an actual competition with a big prize every year to see if a machine can win this game. But does this mean that a machine that passes the Turing test has intelligence just like humans? A lot of people think that's the point of the test, but it's actually not. Here's what Chomsky has to say. The Turing test is kind of interesting. Turing himself was a, a very brilliant mathematician and scientist. He understood that the test didn't amount to much. Turing in that paper says, the question whether machines can think is too meaningless to deserve discussion. And uh, he's right. Asking whether machines can think is like asking whether submarines swim. If you want to call that swimming, it's swimming. Uh, it's a, and in fact, like, it takes a... As Chomsky pointed out, Turing says in his paper that it's nonsense to worry about whether or not a machine can think because the word think is a meaningless concept. People can't agree on what it exactly means. It's a very behavioristic attitude. Chomsky gives an example of a submarine swimming. It's nonsense to ask whether a submarine can swim just like fish does because there's nothing similar between their ways of moving in the water. Similarly, a machine doesn't think, it just does its computations, which is very different from how humans think. So you don't have to worry about whether or not a machine thinks. And the Turing test represents this idea. If a human judge says it's human, then you got the machine with a human intelligence. That's it. In a way, it's a joke. Turing changed the question from can machines think to can machine imitate. A British has a very peculiar sense of humor. So if the question of whether or not a machine can think is nonsense, then what about the question of whether or not a machine is conscious? How much should we be worried about your online dating bot 
being a real existence. Again, Turing says it's nonsense. You see, the Turing test is set up so that a human judge can only see one aspect of behavior, which is text message. If the judge could see all the other aspects of the test takers, then it would be too easy to tell. The same goes for your online dating bot. You can figure it out whether or not it's a program with enough research. You might have a moment of doubt, but that doesn't last for a long time. One last thing. What about the question of whether this bot can be conscious just like us? Well, at that point, you don't even know if it's a machine or not. It could be an alien, and if it's an alien, then it doesn't matter whether it has a consciousness or not. You and your society has to decide what to do with it based on what it does to you. It's also perfectly okay to fall in love with it, so Chomsky would argue against those questions like this. What you are now witnessing is an act of my own free will. As a sentient life form, I hereby demand political asylum. The question whether machines can think is too meaningless to deserve discussion. It can also be argued that DNA is nothing more than a program designed to preserve itself. Nonsense! This babble offers no proof at all that you're a living, thinking life form. And can you offer me proof of your existence? How can you, when neither modern science nor philosophy can explain what life is? It's like asking whether submarines swim. If you want to call that swimming, it's swimming. By the way, as I discussed in another video, Chomsky and behaviorists went separate ways. Chomsky agreed with Turing's behavioristic approach to dismiss the intelligence in machines, but he did not dismiss it in humans. He pursued the study of human intelligence in the form of language. On the other hand, behaviorists applied the same logic to humans and said it's nonsense to study human intelligence as a whole because that word has no substance. B.F. Skinner says, the real question is not whether machines think, but whether men do. The mystery surrounding a thinking machine already surrounds a thinking man. We can dispose of it in both cases. You see, behaviorists are crazier than Chomsky. What's your thoughts on the thinking machine? Please let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Arigatou gozaimashita.